Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. Welcome to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes Videos. My name is Chris, and as usual, we are talking all about water gardens and koi ponds and everything that goes along with it. Um, this is another video in a whole series of videos I have about different aquatic plants for your pond. And I have a whole playlist um, with a ton of these different plants and videos and information for you. And we're gonna continue to add more to that list as time goes on. Um, so today's video is about a plant called pennywort. Now pennywort is often confused with like a lily um, because it has leaves that float on the surface. They're round leaves. Some of the leaves are held up above the surface slightly. Um, but this plant is um, very common and it also, it, it's quite interesting. Um, it can spread like crazy on the surface of a pond, all right? Um, it has a little, um, they're all connected with like stems and the roots come right off of the stems. Um, the plant is quite unique because it can actually just be thrown bare root into your pond and it will grow and spread. Or it could be potted in a container and it can grow in the soil in the container and then come out and spread all over the top of your pond, <laughs> okay? It's not known for any kind of flower. I believe I have seen like a small white pale pink flower on it, small, but it's not nothing that is you know, predominant and beautiful and striking. Um, it's mainly just known for its vegetation. Uh, now, this is actually a really kind of cool plant because it provides a couple different functions in the pond. Um, number one, since it's covering the surface, it's providing some shade and some cover for your fish. Um, it's, you know, it, it will spread, however, okay? It definitely will spread. And not only will it spread across your water surface, it could spread into the rocks on the side of your ponds, out of your pond, and into the dirt in the ground outside the pond, okay? However, the soil outside of the pond, okay, it, it wants water, okay? So, you know, the wetter the ground is outside your pond, the more this will take off. If it's, you know, dry, if you don't have a sprinkler system, and it's probably not gonna do very well. The other thing about this plant is that it does like partial sun. Um, in full sun, sometimes the leaves have a tendency to kind of, um, uh, what's the word I want to say, um, burn slightly. Um, sometimes I've seen that where they kind of, the color kind of fades off a bit. They kind of get a little raggedy looking. They do like more partial sun, partial shade. Um, then they get a nice rich green, deep color. Um, but it is a really invasive plant. Um, I have another pond here I, uh, that I have a client that has a pond and it has it growing on the side of the waterfall. And this stuff has actually grown up into the rocks, up over the waterfall, and it just covers this whole back. Like sometimes you don't even see the water coming down. You gotta pull it apart to see the water. Um, so anywhere that there is water, <laughs> this will grow, okay? Um, but the other function that it does in the pond, not only providing shade, um, it, it helps to uh, filter some of the nutrients out of the water because on all these little stems that all these leaves are growing on, the roots grow right out of these stems and the roots are directly in the water. So in a lot of plants that are planted in pots, the plant is getting its nutrients directly from the soil in that pot. Now, most of the aquatic plants, okay, I even say you can take them out of the dirt and just plant them directly into the rock, bare root, because they're really also gonna get their nutrients out of the water, all right? So either way, but if, you know, typically your plants are getting their nutrients out of the soil. You can put fertilizer tablets in the soil of the pot, okay, the whole bit. These plants, being that they're floating, free floating on the pond, and their roots are coming right into the water, are pulling their nutrients directly from the water. So the advantage of that, okay, 
is that they help control algae. All right. Not only are they providing shade inside your pond, right? It cuts down on the photosynthesis, the amount of sunlight that's penetrating into the water of your pond. So the, the less sun in the pond, the less um, sunlight there is for the algae to grow. Um, and the roots from these plants are absorbing the nutrients in the water that algae also feeds on. But being that algae is a small little cellular plant and you know these are larger plant structures, they're going to pull in more of those nutrients and hopefully the idea is to starve out the algae. Okay. So they do a couple um, different things in your pond. Now that's also very similar to floating plants like water hyacinths and water lettuce, okay? They're the same idea. The root systems are hanging down from the plant directly into the water, pulling those nutrients in from the water. And they too spread on the surface. I have a whole nother video on the water hyacinths and, and water lettuce as well. But these plants are very similar. Um, I wanted to point out the fact that, you know, they are not a water lily. Even though they have small, you know, little round leaves, people think they're little water lilies. They're not. Um, it's a totally different plant. They're not going to have those big beautiful flowers of a water lily, right? So this stuff, um, very unique, very easy to grow, okay? Um, I mean, literally, if you want to propagate this plant, all you got to do is break off a piece of it and stick it in some dirt, or, or just, you can, you can take a piece of this plant, break it off, and just throw it in another pond, and it'll grow, all right? No secret here. Um, now, as far as winter hardiness, all right, it is considered a hardy perennial. Um, but what is free flowing, uh, free floating in your pond has a tendency to die back and die off. So sometimes what really grows back stronger in, in the spring is what's potted or what's really rooted into the rock. Um, but it will come back, okay, and it will keep growing. Um, so it, it is a unique plant. It is definitely uh, capable of taking over a large area in your pond, but it is very easy to cut back and control and, you know, throw out if you need to. All right. Um, definitely. Um, shallow plant, a bog plant, right? It's If you're buying it in a pot, we're not putting it three feet down underwater. We're leaving it up on the shallow shelves. If you have koi, um, you know, they will get in these pots and rip them all apart, all right? So make sure that we have larger gravel on top of the pots. Keep your pots just, you know, an inch or so under the water surface so your big fish can't get in there and rip it all apart. Um, they do become quite a mess when your koi are laying their eggs, okay? Because they will love to get up into all these plants that are floating on the surface and, and lay their eggs and they rip them all apart and it becomes a big mess, okay? Um, but it is, you know, serving its function in the pond. So that's about it. I'm gonna wrap it up here. I just wanted to introduce you to the plant called Pennywort, all right? Um, Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out all my videos, man. I've got so much stuff on here to help you guys out. Um, I, I, you know, I really hope that I can answer some questions for you and, and teach you some things and, and, and you'll have a better experience you know, and success with your own pond. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you back sometime soon. Take care, thank you, bye.